Hello and good morning everyone. So today now we will continue our lecture of this uh, exotoxin and endotoxin in which we have discussed in previous lecture about the difference between the exo and endotoxin. We, we were on the page 131 where we, gave, we have seen that there are the certain differences between exotoxin and endotoxin in which the major work exotoxin is released outside. You can see exotoxin is released outside and it comes to this host cell and then causes the reaction. So, whereas endotoxic, in endotoxin are the present inside the cell and they are released when disintegrated from the cell and then come to the host cell and then cause the reaction and cause, cause the damages. So, we are talking about the uh, differences between the exotoxin and endotoxin where exotoxin was present only in the gram, gram positive, in both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So, all bacteria can secrete exotoxin whereas endotoxin was secreted only from the outer cell membrane of the most gram negative bacteria. So it was only limited to the gram negative one. Then there was a, <coughs> we know about the secreted from the cell that is exotoxin will do but endotoxin will not. Then the chemistry was also, it was a protein whereas this was the lipid which is a toxic component then there was the other component like carbohydrates, polysaccharide. Then location of gene was in the plasmid whereas there was in the bacterial chromosome the toxicity. The toxicity was high in case of the exotoxin. So a small amount of exotoxin that is released in the environment that is going to cause a severe damage to your body. That's going to make a lot of changes in your body. Whereas the endotoxin, it is highly toxic. It is also, it is less in comparison to exotoxin because endotoxin, it requires a lot of endotoxin to cause, activate these three mechanisms like macrophage activation, complement pathway and tissue factor activation which we will talk in the subsequent lecture, in the next lecture actually. So, we are talking about that endotoxin is causing endotoxic shock and uh, killing uh, patient, patient is going to die in, because of septic shock. A lot of uh, patient you can see in your emergency when you are a medical official, you have seen a lot of patient coming with the endotoxic shock, that is septic shock. This all of this may lead to endotoxin release. But if you focus on the exotoxin, they are more powerful, they are more fatal. And how, why? I'll explain you here. That the, you can see in the example, there are a lot of examples like we are now focusing in exotoxin. So exotoxin, there are the different mechanism of exotoxin. Released by the different bacteria, they have the different effect on our body. Suppose if it is the uh, toxin that is released by the coronavirus diphtheria, which is called the diphtheria toxin. If it is the pseudomonas aeruginosa, we call it exotoxin A. If it is due to the Sigella, we call Sigella toxin. If it is due to the endohemorrhagic E. coli, it resembles the Sigella toxin, so it is called the Sigella-like toxin. So these are the toxins that are released and they have a similar mechanism of action that is in the protein synthesis. So you have to, we have to understand that there are the certain mechanisms by which exotoxin act like in the protein synthesis and the example are coronary bacterium diphtheria, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Sigella species, or endohemorrhagic E. coli. Then there is an increased fluid secretion that some of the toxin that increase the fluid secretion from your body and then cause the diarrhea and other damages to your body. That's include actually a formula is C A and B. You can use the C is opposite E that is enterotoxic, then C A for anthrax, C A M, C for cholera, A for anthrax, M is this E if you tilt it down, it should look like the M. So it is will be the uh, C A M and B is pot potassium. So this is the camp that increase the cyclic AMP. You can see over here cyclic AMP, where the C for the cholera, A for anthrax, M if you tilt it like this, it become E, and the P for potassium. These are the uh, thing. These are the toxin that increase the fluid secretion from your body. Then there are certain uh, toxin that has inhibit the release of neurotransmitter in inside your body. So those toxin bacteria release in, into your body that goes to the nervous system and you know, inhibit the release of neurotransmitter that is Clostridium titani and Clostridium botulinum. We will talk in detail. We are just super by, uh, overviewing it. And then there are the certain exotoxins that cause the lysis of the cell membrane like Clostridium perfringens and Streptococcus and there are certain exotoxin that cause, that is known as the super antigen which cause like, super antigen causing shock like Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus so we are discussing about certain uh, exotoxin and the amount of exotoxin we have talk, talked about that is the inhibitor protein synthesis, increased fluid secretion, 
in which the release of neurotransmitter, then there are the certain which cause lysis of the cell membrane, and there are certain which cause act as a super antigen and cause the cell. I'll go in detail in each and every section. So we are talking about now bacteria with exotoxin, mainly focusing in the in it that inhibits the protein synthesis. So you can see, you can see the bacteria with exotoxins inhibit the protein synthesis. There are the four that you have to remember. You have to remember, okay, exotoxin, I have to remember in this way that there are uh, different types of exotoxin that are, falls in the different categories. Some are protein synthesis inhibitor, some are like increased fluid secretion of the uh, body by increase the excited AMP, some are inhibiting the release of neurotransmitter, some are lysing the cell and some are acting as the super antigen. So there are the variety of the exotoxin that are released from the different bacteria and causing the different mechanism of action. So we will deal one by one and the first we are dealing with in this lecture about the inhibit the protein synthesis. So those are the exotoxin that inhibit the protein synthesis that is look if you remember the protein synthesis all are the enzymes protein are enzymes that release in your body suppose liver is in, are releasing an enzyme uh, like anything you can say even bile or liver enzyme or any enzyme is released that is the signal that is the one of the way of protein synthesis if it is stopped then the enzyme that release will be a faulty thing or will be a incomplete so it will not be able to perform that action that has been to be done like if it has to digest your food that will not be a possible if you have to other functions in any part of the cell any enzyme any hormones that are released that have the protein synthesis and if that is inhibited means further action of that cell is inhibited let me go in details like coronibacterium diphtheria you have heard about the coronibacterium diphtheria which is responsible for causing the diphtheria I have a publication in New England Journal of Medicine where you have published a clinical image when a diphtheria, you can see that there will be the pseudomembranous colitis, pseudo, no, not colitis, pseudomembrane will form in your throat and there will be a bull, bull neck appearance, patient will be having the localized infection and the toxin that is released, actually not the bacteria, the toxin release goes into the systemic circulation and then attack the, mainly the cardiovascular system and normal system and that protein synthesis of the heart and nerve system is nervous system damaged so both your heart and nervous system is going to get damaged if the, there is a further if you are not able to uh, give antitoxin or and control that infection and give, utilize that toxin then it is going to damage your heart in build the protein synthesis and your heart will develop arrhythmia heart failure and finally death so that is so much important this toxin is very very dangerous and it is working by inhibiting the elongation factor ef2 that is inhibit the protein synthesis okay pharyngitis with pseudomembranous in the throat and severe lymph adenopathy that is the bull, the bull neck and develop the myocarditis that is important similar mechanism of action is for pseudomonas the origination but it is not acting on the heart actually pseudomonas origination at the uh, that can cause the local infection as well as the septic uh, or generalized infection as well but the mostly found as the wound infection or you can say in the 60 fibrocystis patient it can be found in your lungs or in other part also like you can it can be found in that mainly we can found in the bound patient that has got infected in this all there will be the inhibition of this exotoxin will be released by the pseudomonas origination that how it will act it will inhibit the elongation factor but now in the protein synthesis and since the inactivation of the elongation factor that will inhibit the formation of the protein by the help of the exotoxin A which is released by the pseudomonas and erysinosa and that cause the host cell death so that is important so those cell, those wound cells that are going to be damaged and they become debris and then they have to this become the dead cell so you have to understand the infection where pseudomonas erysinosa is going on it will release this toxin despite the bacteria is there they will release the toxin in their environment this goes to the surrounding cell that inhibit this elongation factor, inactivate the elongation factor, that inhibit the protein synthesis and the host cell will be death. It may be in wound, it may be in your lungs, it may be a systemic infection. Okay. Now coming to the Siga lysis species and interohemorrhagic E. coli. These both are releasing a toxin known as the Siga toxin. Actually, it is a release from the Siga lysis species, so it is known as the Siga toxin. It is also <clears throat> in interohemorrhagic E. coli, O157S7, you will have to remember that because it's causing the sudden like hemolytic uremic syndrome so this is the important strand of the E. coli that is causing hemorrhagic this interhemorrhagic E. coli that causes the hemolytic uremic syndrome and this both has why is this species important 
uh, with the cigarette, cigarette species. These both are important because they are releasing this cigarette toxin. What does this cigarette toxin do? That goes into the environment, that goes to inside your cell, in, in activate the 60S ribosome by removing the 89 from the ribosomal honor. So it is again inhibit the protein synthesis. We are dealing with only the exotoxin that is going to inhibit the protein synthesis of your cell inside your body. So we talked about grand vacuum theory. We have talked about the pseudomonas adrenosha. Now we are talking about the CGLA in internal homozygote coli. In it, both are releasing the Sega toxin. And this Sega toxin, what is the mechanism of action? This is going to inhibit the protein synthesis, obviously. But why? Are, it, are they are going to inactivate the longestance factor? No, it is not the current vector diphtheria or pseudomonas aeruginosa. They are going to inactivate the longestance factor too and inhibit the protein synthesis. Whereas, Sigella species and internal hemorrhagic E. coli, this both has the cigar toxin, but they are inhibiting the protein synthesis only by inactivating the 60S ribosomal subunit by removing the adenine from the ribosomal RNA. Both ways, the protein synthesis is going to inhibit and your cell is going to be hampered. The protein that is in this is will be incomplete or a faulty one and your cell function is not going to be take place. So what is happening there? There is an activation uh, once the 60, 60S ribosomal is uh, inhibited, inactivated by the, that inhibit the protein synthesis that going to cause the damage to the GI mucosa. The SIGA species is your gastrointestinal infection. So this is going to infect your internal hemorrhagic E. coli is also going to cause you diarrhea. It has its, it is a GI infection. So in, in gastro, gastrointestinal tract, in the GI mucosa, it will absorb in the GI mucosa. It will activate the protein synthesis and damage the GI mucosa and causing the sloughing of the cell and there will be the uh, uh, dysentery. That uh, blood vessel will be exposed, the bleeding will occur and there will be the damage and there will be the blood in your stool. That is known as the dysentery. It also enhances the cytokine release that is causing the hemolytic uremic syndrome proto, uh, prototypically in the enterohemorrhagic E. coli which is known as the O157 and 7. This is the one of the important strand of the E. coli that is causing the uh, outbreaks of the, this enterohemorrhagic diarrhea which is a very uh, com important one. There, was, there can be the outbreak and this is the deadly one. Not a deadly one but it is actually found in the children and the adult one and they are, they are going to be caused this hemolytic uremic syndrome, as you as prototypically in the intero EHCC, that is O157 and 7. The intero hemorrhagic E. coli is also given a term, a uh, name that O157 and 7. We, this information can be used to give you a, a, a double or uh, um, they are giving an information, they will ask you the question. So they are, they will say, uh, a patient get infected with O157 and 7, then you have to understand they are talking about the intero hemorrhagic E. coli. Then it should be clicked, okay, it is going to be the protein synthesis by producing the cigar toxin or cigar like toxin so that should be click so there will be first degree or second degree question and you have to answer okay unlike cigala ehcc does not invade the host cell so one more important thing is that cigato cigala species bacteria itself invade our cell invade our gi cell while as the internal hemorrhage e coli only the toxin cause the action not the bacteria itself goes inside inside your cell and goes in this doesn't enter into the intestinal epithelial cell. They, they are toxin that increase the, uh, they can cause the damages by inhibiting the protein synthesis, but bacteria itself is not invasive. But in case of Sigella, the bacteria itself enter inside your epithelial cell of the gastrointestinal tract. So hope it is clear that inhibit the protein synthesis Exotoxin released by the bacteria are current bacterium diphtheria, pseudomonas aeruginosa, cigala spese, and hemorrhagic E. coli. And this protein synthesis is inhibited by two mechanisms one by inactivating the elongation cell factor, EF2, and another by inhibiting the 68 ribosomal unit and their species. In this way, what were the effect? And this can be important to ask your question in your USMLE.